Namaste. Welcome to Vedic Vidya. My name is Jeffrey Armstrong, Govinda Rishi. Vedic Vidya is available exclusively on Chitty Media English Channel on Thursday and Sunday nights at 7 p.m. IST. Our topic for this evening is how colonial Britain stole trillions of dollars from India, or how India bankrolled and impoverished Britain. An almost unthinkable amount of wealth was taken from India. This is a very interesting part of our story. I want you to listen carefully because you've never heard this before, I'm pretty sure. At that time in history, when the European countries went out into the rest of the world, they actually did so with permission from the Catholic Pope. Did you know that? Neither did I for a very long time. So I want to share some things with you, but I want to caveat first. This isn't to get you angry to go out and cause trouble to current day people. History is not meant for that. Remember, those who do not study history are bound to repeat it. So we're going to talk about history today, but not so that you go out and be angry with the generations who have subsequently come into existence from those who perpetrated these deeds. As someone who's a follower of the Vedic knowledge, we believe, we as a culture, that all of us are immortal beings and we're changing bodies from life to life. So you may be best friends with one of the previous perpetrators of these offenses within history. But if we forget them, we won't learn from them. So the purpose of this presentation is not revenge, it's wisdom, and it's to take active steps right now to make sure that the same problems don't exist. And what was the problem? Let me say it for you again. This show is about how Britain stole trillions of wealth from India in the name of Jesus. This was about the time that Columbus and others went out into the world and supposedly discovered places. That's the term. But that term, discovered, actually means went out in the world with two papal bulls issued by the Catholic Church. The first was called the Bull Romanus Pontifex by Pope Nicholas V, issued January 8, 1455. The second, the Bull Intercatera, by Pope Alexander VI, May 4th of 1493. Both of these papal bulls gave permission to all the Catholic countries in Europe to go out into the world with ships, gunpowder, and by force, to go to all cultures that were considered pagan by the then Christian church, Catholic church. And so ships went out carrying these papal bulls that authorized them to go and discover all the cultures in the world that were not Christian. You could not discover a Christian culture. They already were Christian. The purpose of this discovery process, which is now a legal term, at least in the US, it's still a legal term. And it's the reason that the First Nations peoples of the United States are not of the same status as the citizens of the United States. Because they are not exactly people. I'm sure these are new ideas for you. But the ships that went out into the world, now with the permission of the Pope, the blessings of the Pope and encouragement, 
went out to discover. And discovery means to take whatever was in the hands of the people, no matter who they were or where they lived, if they were not Catholic and Christian, then you could take all of their possessions, own their land, steal their resources. You could pillage, even rape, take everything, enslave them. And the land that they lived on was under a doctrine called terra nullis. It means if they're not Christian, the land is actually empty. These are legal terms from the Catholic Church. Terra nullis. The land is empty unless it's owned by Christians, occupied by Christians, essentially Catholics. The second word, these are two toxic Latin terms, is persona non grata. You may think you know that one because that's someone not welcome in your social group, persona non grata. In actual fact, it means appearing like a person but isn't really one. We don't hear that much these days. But now you know the truth, that the land that is occupied by those who are not Christian is empty. And that beings appearing to look human but not Christian were, under this principle, persona non grata, not persons. I'm setting the mood for you so that you understand that it wasn't people like we know today in the centuries we're living in. It was people at another time who had these unique ideas that went out into the world and robbed and enslaved and desecrated and denigrated the cultures of the world, all the cultures that they encountered. It just so happens that one of the wealthiest, one of the most magnificent, and certifiably the oldest a historical landmark in the culture of India was that 7,582 years ago, according to the astronomical data in the Mahabharata, the great epic story of that time in history, 7,582 years ago, the famous text called the Bhagavad Gita was spoken. Think of that as a historical landmark moment in this conversation. That the civilization of India, then called Bharat, and still now by those who love it in its ancient sense, that culture of India was so rich it has a language and had a language called Sanskrit, which is the mother language of Greek and Latin and the Romance languages that arose from that, Italian, Spanish, French, the European languages, Russian, German, Scandinavian. All of these were cultures along a trade route that for the last 10,000 years at least was connected to India, and the knowledge of India flowed out along that trade route, and because of the natural resources in India, and because of the great science and wisdom of its culture, when it was discovered by the British, when it was discovered by them, meaning colonized and robbed of everything that wasn't nailed down, that period of discovery was a black period in human history. And for 300 years or so, that discovery, which we now call rape and pillage, that theft of everything that a culture has, that invalidation of them as human beings, that naming them not human because of their color or because they don't have your belief system, I want you to understand that no one who is a true follower of the Vedic knowledge of India 
is disrespectful to any other culture or civilization. Namaste, when we say that, it means I see you as an immortal being, no matter what you appear to be. Dirty clothes, magnificent clothes, male, female, from one culture or another, brown skinned, green skinned, yellow skinned. You could come from Mars with antenna and we'd say namaste. This is the basis of a civilization that starts with respect and stays in respect during the whole conversation. And I'm juxtaposing this for you because this show is my attempt to bring some of this information to your conscious knowing. Not so that you'll be angry, not so that we'll have more violence in our world, but so that this will never happen again. And perhaps something I think is very important if we can find our, a way to do this, some of that money that was taken could be dedicated to all the great cultures of the world, to India and all the rest, who were so ravaged and disparaged and mistreated. Perhaps we could dedicate funding so that they could revive their language and their culture. And without the prejudice that went along with this historical discovery, perhaps they could tell us who they really are on their terms, not someone else's not Christianity's, or any other religion, or any other politic, or under duress or fear. But what if they could really share their wisdom with us for the first time in history and be honored and have funding to revive their languages and write down what they remember still of their ancient cultures? The reason I'm saying this is because this is not just about India. India is the mothership of indigenous cultures. India is the last standing and still cognizant and literate culture that was brutally colonized, ravaged of its wealth. Hundreds of millions of people died needlessly in famines and in other induced calamities. So this historical period of discovery, if you look it up, those papal bulls that I mentioned to you, you'll find them online. You'll see them as legal documents, 15 pages long. The gist of it is, if you go out in the world, you can steal anything that isn't the property of Christians. So I want you to think for a moment that there are people within Christianity who still think that way. Not everyone. And the same is true for Islam. There are members of Islam who I have dear friends who are Islamic, and I have dear friends who are Christian, and I have read their books and studied their culture. I have the utmost regard for them as truth seekers when it's a truth they seek for themselves. But one of the things we have to talk about, that's why we're talking about it first, is that if your truth tells you to go ravage and pillage another civilization and that you have a right to do that just because of your truth, that's not religion, that's insanity. And that is now insanity in the name of religion. And something done in the name of, of a religion that is really seeking the truth is insanity. And you, as a true practitioner of that religion, need to say so. So this doesn't polarize us into religious beliefs antagonistic to each other. As I said, India was never antagonistic to other ways of thinking. They were best friends with all the people they knew along that Silk Road. 10,000 years of trading and sharing ideas and language. And in our next show, we'll talk about that language and how it affected the Greeks and the Romans and all of European civilization. We're all cousins. This conversation is not to inflame the family so that we 
find another reason to be antagonistic is so that we can finally heal the wounds of a history that should never have happened and one that we do not want to see repeated and we'd like to see it atoned for in various ways. Not just to India. Think of us as the flagship. Think of India as the flagship culture. But only because it is of such antiquity, of such sophistication, that what we call science today came from there. And I'll prove it to you in future shows. What we call language is filled with Sanskrit terminology. English, thousands of Sanskrit words that you don't even know are Sanskrit. Most people don't even know that they're Latin also, or that they're Greek also, the language. So this show is dedicated to a principle, Satyam Eva Jayate. Sanskrit for the truth ultimately prevails. And this is a truth-seeking show to share with you, and it will create controversy, but it's not if it leads, if it bleeds, it leads journalism. This is to tell you a truth that's shocking, for you to look it up and see that it's true, and then for all of us to decide it's not going to happen again. And for all of us to become friendly. The goal of this show is to tell the truth so we can all become friends and not live in the past and not repeat the past. Only the part of the past that was holy, sacred, beautiful, beneficial, great culture, that we want to celebrate together. So thank you very much for listening. This is just the beginning of an investigation that I have pursued for the last 50 years of my life. All my life, I looked around and said, this can't be the whole story. Dropping nuclear weapons on innocent people cannot be where we're headed. Turning people into cattle and treating them like animals with technology and giving them numbers and forcing them to lose all of their human individuality and rights is not where our civilization should be going. And that is a message not from me, but that I pass on to you from the Vedic Vidya, the great knowledge of Bharat of India. So remember, first, I and we see everyone as immortal divine beings. And next we know Satyam Eva Jayate. The truth will eventually prevail. Thanks for listening. My name is Jeffrey Armstrong Kavinder Rishi, and I look forward to seeing you again in the near future. Namaste. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanyavad. Namaskar.